Hi everyone, I'm Dave from Mathagon and I am excited to show you our Polypad updates for July and August 2022. Here I am on a Polypad and I have a hexagon on the canvas and we have added the ability to scale polygons. So I'm going to click on the gear in the action bar and you can see that there is this new option to change the scale factor. So this is a hexagon with a scale factor of one. I just made a copy of it with the C button on my keyboard, and I'm gonna make a scale factor of 1.5. And you can see I get one that's a little bit bigger. Let me copy this again, and let's enter in a scale factor of two. The side length is uh, now is twice as long as the original side length of the hexagon. I can also do scale factors that are less than one, I could do a scale factor of 0 0.5 and a scale factor of 0.25. In fact, you could do any scale factor from 0.1 up to 10. So you can make really small polygons and really large polygons as well. So that's new. Uh, a lot of teachers have been asking for the ability to have polygons of different sizes. And so we're really excited to have this ability with scale factors. The other new feature is the ability to have no labels on a ruler. So here's the ruler under the utensil section, and I'm gonna click on the gear, and you can see that the labels can be in centimeters or inches or both. That is all um, features that have been on Polypad for a while, but the new feature is the ability to have none. So here I can just use this as a straight edge, so if you and your students are involved in some geometric constructions, and you just want to have a straight edge, that, um, that option of having, having none in the labels can be, uh, can be really helpful. OK, another new feature we've added at, that we've heard a request from a lot of teachers about is under Games and Applications. I'm going to go to Currencies here. And we have coins in dollars, euros, British pounds. And we have now added, uh, we have added Canadian coins. So here is the Canadian dollar coin, the loony, and the $2 coin, the toony. So all of the Canadian coins are here on Polypad. Uh, we have since learned that the cent is no longer available in Canada. That coin is, is not an option anymore, but we uh, are going to keep it on Polypad. So as students explore with the five cent um, and other coins, they can have the one cent as a way to compare all the different coins. So that's really exciting. Uh, and the last feature to show you that is new are a couple of ways to interact with tiles. So I'm going to add um, a number line to the canvas here, which is not new. Just going to use this as an example. So I'm in the number sections. I'm going to add a number line to the canvas. Let me zoom out a little bit. And um, I'm going to put a question builder tool on the number line. First, I'm going to change this. Let me count by tens just to change it a little bit. So I, I'm at zero, and I'm counting by tens. And I'm going to go under Games and Applications. And the very last one is the Question Builder tool. This is where teachers can add questions for students to complete on Polypad. If you don't know a lot about the Question Builder tool, there is a video on mathagon.org learn where you can learn how to use the Question Builder tool. This only appears in teacher accounts. So if you are watching this video and you are trying this on Mathagon and the Question Builder tile is not there, uh, go to your account settings in the top right and change your account to a teacher account. And again, uh, oh, I, I'm going to click on the question mark here and open the help and tutorial page. I get a new tab and I'm going to scroll down just to show you there's a video here on the question builder. So you can learn a lot more about the question builder tool uh, in that video. But for now, uh, I'm going to take this tile, I'm going to put it on the canvas and I'm going to cover up uh, let's just cover up the number 40. So as a teacher, I'm going to enter in that this is 40. I'm going to go to File here and save this canvas. I'll just call this example here and hit Save. And now I'm, I'm going to copy this. You can see that this has been copied to the clipboard. I'm going to swipe over to an incognito tab and paste that link. So imagine I were a student here on this canvas. Uh, I just want to go down to the number line. And what is new here is that you can see as a student, I'm trying to move this, you know, this box where I enter the answer. I click it and I delete it and the box doesn't go away. So that is a new feature is that the question builder boxes for students. In fact, anyone who is not the author of that 
it's locked in place. And so here I can enter in 40 and I get that check mark and the confetti. All right. Uh, if this is a canvas that I'd assign to students, they can, um, as you can see here, they can move the number line. They could, they could change the number line. They could delete the number line. So I want to show you some new features that um, allow you to prevent students from moving and, and deleting tiles that you don't want them to. So I'm going to go back to my account where I made this polypad. Here I am. And um, I'm going to click on the number line and show you the gear menu these new options under layer and interactivity. They're not actually new, they're just in a new spot here with a different name to make it a little bit more clear. So I want students to, to not change this number line. And so under interactivity, the one that is, um, is set to begin with is default, which means anyone can move, delete, change the color, rotate, et cetera. I wanna lock this number line. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it to lock. I'm going to do Command S to save this polypad. You can see it's now saved. And now when I go back over to a student here and give this a refresh, you can see there's the number line. I'll zoom in again. I can't click on it. So I can't even select the number line. I can't delete it. I can't move it. I still can enter in 40 here to get this right. But now I can't. I can't change the number line. So I'm going to go back to where I made this. Uh, so this number line's locked. Now if you, as the teacher, you're like, oh, I... I want to change the number line. I actually want it to start at negative 10, but it's locked. You can edit a locked tile under grid and display. So I'm going to turn on edit hidden and locked tiles. And now I get this icon showing me I'm in the mode where I'm editing a hidden and locked tile. I can change it now. Let's say I, I want to start at 10. And now I can go back in here and turn off edit hidden and locked tiles. All right, so that was done under interactivity. Let me show you an example where you might want to do the option of cannot move. So let me put a, a polygon and a couple dice on the canvas. And so I selected all of them and under interactivity, I'm gonna select the option of cannot move. And this is where you want students to be able to interact with the tiles, maybe make copies of them or roll the dice, but not move or delete the tiles. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this. I just did command S to save go back to the student example, hit a reload. And now you can see that I can select the dice and I can roll them, uh, but I can't move them. I'm trying to click and drag to, to move them. I can't. I'm hitting delete on my keyboard. I can't delete them. And the same with the triangle. Uh, I can make a copy of it and this copy I can rotate and I could cut if I wanted to. But this now, um, this triangle that's locked under cannot move, uh, is like an infinite pile of these triangles, right? So I can't delete it. I'm hitting the delete button on my keyboard. It's not going away. If I make a copy of it, those I can delete, but it's, 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 um, it's fixed in place on the canvas and students again can make copies of it, just can't fully delete that tile. Let me go back to my um, original polypad here. So again, that was under, under cannot move. And finally, you can make tiles invisible. This, this comes up a lot in geometric construction. So let me just make this triangle invisible. Uh, it's gone here, right? Um, and again, under grid and display, I can, I can edit the hidden and locked tiles. You can see it has a dotted line around it when I click on that triangle to show me that that was um, an invisible tile. I can go back here and make that as a default. And the final thing is layering. So, um, Let's say for whatever reason, I always wanted this triangle on the top here, right? Um, and so let me go back to interactivity, make this a default, right? So here the triangle was on top, but when I click on the dice, that goes on top. So a number of options as a way to layer this, I could, um, I could keep this uh, in the back and now the triangle is on top. And even if I roll it, the triangle is always on top or I could set the triangle, let me go back and make this a default again. I could set the triangle to always be on, um, on the top and that would work as well, right? So on all, of these, um, on all of these tiles, there's the option under layer to have top, default, and back. All right, so those are some ways to create a canvas 
uh, with a variety of options, whether you want students to be able to interact with a tile but not delete it or move it, whether you want a tile fully locked and some layering options as well. So those are the uh, July and August 2022 updates. Hope you find those helpful and uh, we would love to see ways that you include those into your teaching. Just as a reminder, anytime you're on Polypad, you can always, you can always head to the bottom of the tile menu and click on what's new and that will pull up a window with all of the latest updates to Polypad. Thanks for watching.